Good leaders never stop challenging themselves. And, and, and the way you know, I put it you know, to myself every single day, I only have two major questions I ask myself in every single situation. No matter where I am in the world, no matter who I, I'm, I'm working with, internally or external meetings. Good leadership is thrilling, but it's also very, very demanding. So you've got to be ready for that. I have to say that becoming a good leader is not easy. It takes a lot of work, a humble mindset, and a major time commitment uh, to develop your own leadership style. I know it's a very special time uh, for you and I wish you a happy and prosperous month of Ramzan. Um, and again, you know, thanks for really inviting us and, and thanks for making the time you know, uh, to be here uh, with us. I will uh, set uh, the context uh, of the book uh, so that uh, you understand uh, the, the full background and then I'll be very, very honored to get any questions you, you, you might have. But let me just start uh, by saying that you're very fortunate uh, to be uh, here studying at the University of Dhaka, uh, legend in the world of education, not only in the country but also in the region. Uh, some impressive achievements and, and, and some of your alumni have made histories, including, of course, the 2006 Nobel Peace Prize winner. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a bit uh, older than you. I, I graduated back in 1983 uh, from a business school in Paris. Since then, as you heard from Sandeep, I had uh, the privilege to work for some of the best companies in the world. Best and Young, Colgate, Pepsi, Burger King, uh, Diageo. When I was at uh, Inchcape, I had the pleasure to work with some of the best automotive companies in the world. Of course, Toyota, BMW, Mercedes. Um, I was on the board of Rekid Menkiza and today I, I run Intertech a fabulous uh, company and I would start by you know sharing some some great news uh, with you don't believe you know what you read in the press necessarily about the state of the global economy or the state of our society I think uh, my, my view is that the opportunities for you as uh, future leaders are immense and, and, and very soon uh, it will be your time uh, to build on the legacy of uh, you know your colleagues who have studied here at the university and very soon it will be your time uh, you know, to demonstrate that uh, you are a force for good and, and, and I wish you that uh, very soon it will be your time to contribute to making our society a much better place and, and demonstrate that uh, each of you, you're really born you know, to make the world a much safer and better place. During my times uh, throughout my career, there have been instances uh, where I've been moved by examples of what I call good leadership which is essential to unleash uh, the potential of any organization, you know, public or, or private. In the beginning of the 90s, I became a leader myself, and I have to say that I've worked hard since then and still work hard today on what it takes to become a good leader. I've attended many uh, training sessions, have uh, read lots of books on management and, and leadership, but doing so, I realized, and it's not a sign of arrogance, this is just my own conclusion, there was no end-to-end -end leadership model uh, that could be helpful for me to, to visualize and understand, internalize what leadership is, is all about. And having led quite a few organizations over the last uh, 25 years, I'm often asked to share you know, my approach to leadership. So that's why I've captured my leadership approach in a model called Leadership with Soul, which I never stop applying in every single day. And, and it's uh, the base of the book. I'm passionate about helping leaders to do their job you know, uh, you know, for their own uh, you know, stakeholders. And I thought that putting my thoughts on leadership uh, with soul in a book would help existing and future leaders uh, to invest time in their own personal growth agenda if this is what they're interested in, if they really want to work on becoming a good leader. Essentially, you know, the book is an invitation for existing and future leaders to get better at leadership in their own way. Uh, as I said uh, a few moments ago, I believe that for you future leaders and for us existing leaders, the opportunities in the world are immense uh, and there is no question that companies today are much better run than they were 20, 30, 40 or 50 years ago. But uh, this is my conclusion having worked for 
lots and lots of companies and working with more than 400,000 companies at Intertech that I believe that today's companies at large in the world are not unleashing their full potential. Uh, and, 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 and my view is that companies at large are overmanaged and underled. There is too much management in the corporate world, but not enough leadership. Of course, you know, leaders uh, like, uh, like, like some of us are well-intentioned. You know, they work hard at, at trying to make a difference, uh, and, and, and there is no question about it that this is you know, really, really uh, something that they do, but it doesn't seem to work. And, and, and why do I say that? I don't know if you've ever heard of Gallup, which is the world authority in terms of measuring you know, uh, you know, what's happening at the workplace. They call it workplace science or engagement. And basically, um, the global survey that uh, they do every single year, and you look at the la last numbers in published in 2022, you know, basically show that 80%, 80%, of the global workforce is disengaged. And this is a, a shocking statistic. This is a, you know, one of the few data that I mentioned in the book, because it basically says that every day, 2.8 billion employees wake up in the morning, go to their workplace, or go to their employers without being truly excited, truly passionate, and really putting some discretionary efforts in, in, in their job uh, for the day ahead. And a 20% engagement level in the workforce is just not good enough. Uh, and, and I think if I were to summarize, you know, the opportunity you have as, as leaders, the opportunities we have as leaders, making the workplace a much better place for these 2.8 billion employees that wake up every morning and go to work is essentially the opportunity that we all have as existing and, and future leaders. It's a fabulous, it's a fabulous opportunity. And I believe that companies will only unleash their full potential if they operate with a highly engage workforce. And to that challenge, uh, which is a, a big challenge, uh, there is only one solution. It's what I call good leadership. And of course, I've given a lot of thoughts over the years on how to define good leadership, because that's where it all starts. And let me just uh, share with you a few, few concepts. First of all, good leadership is thrilling, but it's also very, very demanding. So you've got to be ready for that. The thrill of achieving great things through your own people is highly energizing. And if you had to take one definition of good leadership, is achieving big things, achieving big things through your own people. But leadership is very demanding, and becoming a good leader takes time. It doesn't happen uh, overnight. Determination, but also an open mind. You've got to be curious. Good leaders have to operate with strong values. They typically lead based on inspirational purpose that is meaningful for the employee, really important to connect with the workforce. Good leaders, of course, have to be visionary and entrepreneurs. They've got to understand what it takes to build a business. They also need to understand what sustainability is all about and creating sustainable value for all stakeholders. In my view, good leaders put people at the heart of their strategic thinking and day-to-day -day operations. Good leaders never stop challenging themselves. And, and, and the way you know, I put it you know, to myself every single day, I only have two major questions I ask myself in every single situation. No matter where I am in the world, no matter who I, I'm, I'm working with, internally or external meetings. Are we doing the right things to deliver our goals? It's the what, and importantly the how. Are people truly engaged in the workplace? How do people feel? And these two questions are really, really the barometer that I use every single day to measure how successful, effective I am as, as a leader. And having worked continuously and vigorously at my own leadership approach, I have to say that becoming a good leader is not easy. It takes a lot of work, a humble mindset, and a major time commitment uh, to develop your own leadership style, no matter how powerful or important you are in an organization. There is this concept or this view that the moment you are higher up in the organization, you stop learning well. In my view, you've got to learn even faster because your job is even more complex than before. If I were to use a metaphor, leadership is like doing sport at the highest level. And, and like champions, leadership, leaders are not born. They might have an intellectual or physical predisposition to lead others, but they have to work very hard to be the best over time. And 
I've experienced this firsthand. Good leadership is truly exhilarating. And, and once you've become a good leader, it's like you know, becoming the Formula One world champion. You drive much faster than your competition on the racetrack because you have a team that you can count on and you have, your team has built a car that gives you the opportunity to accelerate when the others are slowing down because you've got full confidence in your team. That's what you know, uh, you know, good leadership is all about, right? Achieving great things through your own people. I've also have learned that like in sport, once you've become a good leader, you never stop trading hard to stay fit. Saying that in simple terms, good leadership is a continuous journey. You never stop, you never stop improving yourself. The moment you stop learning, you start declining as a person. This is my view, and we might debate it, that today's leaders at large are too focused on short-term performance and most of them fail to deliver sustainable growth and value for their stakeholders and for me achieving great things through people every single day for today the day after tomorrow and any day in the future is what good leadership is is all about and leadership with soul will help you think it through by putting people at the heart of your growth strategies and trying to reconcile the interest of shareholders and employees. Uh, sometimes people say, well, shareholders and employees have got diverging interests. Not really. I mean, shareholders, they want great performance every day. Employees, they want to feel engaged every day. And if employees are not engaged every day, the shareholders will not get strong performance every single day. So it's one of the same you know, uh, you know, goal. It's essentially delivering great performance every single day together in the operations. And this is the only way to deliver sustainable growth for all. Sustainability, we heard it uh, earlier today, is the movement of our times and, and all leaders are, are, are looking for this magic formula. How do I make my business truly sustainable? It's the chapter number 10 in, in the book. And you know, unless you put people at the heart of your day-to-day -day thinking and, and, and action, you're never gonna be able to drive sustainable performance. The book is anchored on 10 principles to help leaders unleash the full potential in their own organization. These principles are agnostic. They apply to any situations, any company, any time, any cycle in business. If you read the book, you can start with any principles. There is no logic. The principle number one is about leading with emotional intelligence making sure that you know you really you know provide the right intelligence intelligent leadership to your to, to your employees the principle number two is about imagining the journey painting the picture being a visionary number three it's about energizing the organization to outperform really important how do you energize the company to really do better than the competition the principle number four is about customer intimacy this is the ultimate advantage you know to be truly customer centric the principle number five is about reinventing the future, said differently, innovation. I'm of your view that unless you reinvent yourself, somebody will do that for you and will take you out of business. So no matter how strong you are, you always need to innovate. Principle number six is mastering complexity. Very difficult. It's about getting the right equilibrium between capability and complexity at any time in your organization. Principle number seven is about embodying the strategy at the top. It's about how the top leadership team behaves and drives the strategy in action. Really, really important because it's got to come you know, right, uh, with the right tone from the top. Principle number eight is about laser focus execution. A lot of leaders focus a lot on strategy and external communications, but forget the importance of execution. Success in business is 1% strategy and 99% execution. As a leader, you really need to focus on that. Principle number nine is about communication. I call that ever better branding globally. I believe in, in global brands, but I also believe in local you know, needs and, and you need to strike the right uh, balance when you are operating a brand with the global approach that I talk about in the book. And principle number 10 is about sustainability. How do you make sure you understand the interest of every single stakeholders and how do you drive sustainable performance, sustainable growth, sustainable value for every single stakeholders, not just one. In the book, uh, there is a chapter for each of these principles. I share quite a lot of stories uh, in every uh, chapter to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make uh, you know, from a theoretical uh, standpoint. All the examples I use are personal examples so that the data is pure. I'm really clear that this is the right insight for you to understand the point I'm just trying to make. 
I also would say that leadership with soul is for all leaders, not just CEOs of large companies. You could be running a, a, a hotel, a, a restaurant, a small or medium, large companies. You could be running a university, a government. The principles are agnostic and, and you know, they apply to profit and non-profit organizations. So one final word before we take any question you have. Becoming a successful leader is a journey, no question about it. Uh, it takes time, take time to become a good leader. The success of any leaders will be visible for many years to come. And, and a leader that doesn't leave an organization with a strong track record of value creation and a platform for future value creation has failed. Because legacy is the ultimate measurement of what good leadership is all about. And getting the right legacy is about doing what's right with the right approach and the, the right uh, strategies, of course. And one final comment, because we are living in a very fast-paced society where news move very, very quickly and, and facts are there all the time. We should all remember that only the significant moments of our lives will be remembered when people look at your own legacy. So at its core, Leadership with Soul is about achieving great things that are enduring and, and meaningful for all, starting with your people. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are the future leaders uh, of this world. Uh, you have immense opportunities you know, to make a difference, and, and I wish you all the best, and I look forward to you know, hearing about your achievements in the next few years. Thank you very much.